Hey guys, so I want to do some sculpting, but I don't have anything to sculpt with at home. Um, luckily, my wife is a teacher too. She actually teaches little kids in preschool and she knows how to make her own Play-Doh. So uh, I'm gonna try to make some of my own Play-Doh so I can use it to sculpt. Um, I'm gonna show you how to do this, but before anything else, I'm gonna tell you right now, do not try to do this by yourself. If you're interested in making your own Play-Doh, get a parent to come help you. You can show them this video. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. Again, let me repeat, do not try to do this by yourself. Ask a parent to help you if you wanna try to do this. So uh, yeah, let's um, go ahead and figure out how to do this. All right, so we're gonna need a bunch of ingredients, which I'll go over in a minute. We're gonna need a pot and a stove. And when we're finished, we're gonna have a bunch of Play-Doh. So the recipe that I will put in the description gives us about this much, which is, I'd say about six cans worth of Play-Doh. That's about how big it is in my hand. So uh, let's figure out exactly how to do this. So uh, first things first, remember, I already said this, but I'll say it again, do not try to do this by yourself. Get a parent to help you. You never wanna mess with stuff cooking stuff unless you got someone who you know knows what they're doing take it from a guy who's burned his hand on the stove a lot of times not fun so again do not try this on your own get a parent to help you out so we've got a little pot this is what we're going to actually make our play doh in um, over here we have all-purpose flour so all-purpose flour is stuff you'd normally use to make like bread um i already made a bunch so we're going to use half of what our recipe says the recipe says two cups i'm going to use one cup then we need salt, just regular salt like you put on your food. Um, the recipe calls for three-fourths of a cup. We need vegetable oil, which is this guy right here. Our recipe is going to call for about two tablespoons of vegetable oil. Um, the recipe also calls for something called cream of tartar that I think is supposed to help the consistency or something, right? Mm -hmm. But we don't have that. So supposedly vinegar is gonna help with this. We're gonna use some vinegar that I guess helps preserve it. Mm -hmm. Cool, and then we've got uh, water. Recipe calls for two cups. Since I'm making half, I'm using one cup. Again, I'll put all these measurements in the description so you don't have to guess what you're doing with that. So uh, here we go. First things first, we've got our pot over here on the stove. The stove is not on yet, so everything is still cool. You could do this in a mixing bowl if you wanted to, but there's no real like need to do that um, if you're gonna be making it in the pot anyway. So I'll put my flour. Again, if you want to make as much as I showed you over there, that'd be two cups of flour. I'm going to put my salt. That'd be three-fourths a cup of salt if you're making that amount. I'm going to do my vegetable oil. That's which... the vinegar and oil. Oh, the vinegar's already in here? Mm -hmm. Cool. So vinegar and vegetable oil. Again, if you have cream of tartar, you might use that instead of vinegar. Um, I don't have that though, and it calls for four, ta for four teaspoons of cream of tartar. Cool, and then my water, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm gonna dump all this together and come get a, uh, a look at that. And as you can see, it's super wet and chunky, and actually, I am gonna use a whisk. Can I use a whisk? Mm -hmm. Is that a thing? I have kind of a spoon. I feel like it might make it easier to mix if I use a whisk, which is one of these guys. And I'm just gonna kind of mix it up. And right now, it honestly looks kind of gross. <laughs> it looks almost like when you first start making oatmeal, like instant oatmeal, and you put the, uh, the water into the oatmeal, and then you gotta mix it up so it won't be all chunky. Right now it is still super chunky. So I'm gonna give it a good stir. Now, we just made some that I showed you a minute ago, and when we made it, Erica actually made it, she did not have the chunks like all the way mixed in. I don't think you need to. Apparently, it's gonna turn out just fine because, you know, Play-Doh is a little chunky anyway when you... All right, so, good to go on that. We're gonna turn the heat to what? Medium. Okay, so I'm gonna turn my heat. I would err on the lower side of medium if you are concerned. Or if your stove gets super hot, like ours. Okay, and yeah, we have a electric stove, it gets really hot, so maybe I'll turn it to what, four? Again, do not do this part at all without, you know, your parents helping you. So, as it cooks, I'm just gonna continue to mix. And 
And at first, really nothing's happening. It's just kind of stirring it up. But as the heat increases, I guess it'll start to kind of like chunk up a little bit. I don't know what you'd call that. It's gonna get more rigid. So yeah, at this point, mine's looking very, um, most of the chunks are gone. It's looking kind of, still very watery. So I guess the heat is gonna fix that, hopefully in just a minute. What, what'll happen if I turn out yep. my heat? You might burn it. Or it might not mix properly, it might clump up too fast. What if I try it now? Let's turn it up just a little. Let's see what happens. You know, you can kind of control the heat because if you turn it all the way up, it'll with this type of oven anyway. Yeah, I probably shouldn't do that. Ooh, ooh, ooh! You can feel it immediately. Actually, it started to solidify, which is good. That's I what would we want. switch to the spoon before you have a giant clump stuck inside your whisk. Okay. Yep, the bottom part is definitely starting to get kind of goopy. There you go, come, come look at this. So you're seeing it's really starting to chunk up on the bottom, where it almost looks like, you know, wet paint in soup. This is the part where you have to make sure you stir constantly. Okay, so I am not going to stop stirring. And I can definitely feel along the bottom where it's starting to dough up, if you will. So again, to me, this feels a lot like making scrambled eggs. The eggs on the bottom always get, like, chunky first. So I'm just basically scraping the Play-Doh off the bottom as it turns into Play-Doh. And that liquid stuff is going to go down and touch the part of the bottom of the pan where it's hot. And I guess the heat will turn it into Play-Doh, so I'm just going to kind of keep going. Exactly like painting, right? Let me give it a little more heat. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Just a little bit more. You can feel it instantaneously, actually, when you increase the heat. That's exactly what I want. Again, this type of electric oven just isn't very good at Like in the in-betweens, when it's not active, like nothing's happening, you know? All right, well, that's starting to look really chunky. It's like dumplings. Mm -hmm. Ooh, now it's getting real chunky. So you know it's done when, what, when you basically can't stir it anymore? Yep. Well, should I try to get those, like, little liquidy parts to the bottom so they chunk up? Probably. Ooh, this is uh, this is probably pretty done here. Yeah. It turns into super thick mashed potatoes. Yeah, except for, I assume this would taste horrible, mm -hmm. like a salty, uh, a right. salty disaster. Okay, that seems like that's there. it, right? Okay. So again, this is hot. Do not reach in and touch the play-doh. What I'm gonna do is bring it over here. I've got some. Mm -hmm. Parchment paper, you might want to put this on top of a pan or something. Wax paper, parchment paper. Same idea, right? Mm-hmm. And it is definitely looking Play-Doh-y. Again, I can see steam coming off it, so I am not going to touch it with my hands just yet. But it's so <laughs> sticky. I need another tool to get it off here. And honestly, mashed potatoes is like the consistency right now. Um, in our last batch, those blue ones, we actually put the coloring in while we were stirring it together, which is one way you can do it. But obviously this one doesn't have color, so it's just basically going to be white. And then we can color it once it's cooled down a little bit. We can color it by adding food coloring to the plate. So yeah, that's... Uh, it's a big old pile of Play-Doh right there. Cool. Okay. Maybe get these last little bits out of the... You gotta have more sculpting material. You gotta get the last little bits out. 
Thank you. That click was Erica turning off the oven. Good habit to get into to not leave your stove on. Stove, not oven. All right, so I think I'm pretty good with that. Let's let that sit and cool, and let's talk about how we can get color in that once it's done. So over here, these are already nice and cooled. And as you can see, they are very Play-Doh-y, which is exactly what we want. Um, we added, I think we split this because this was all like starting with two cups of two cups of flour, which is the recipe I'll put in the description down below. And uh, yeah, we ended up using what, like 40 drops of blue? 20 plus. 20 plus, oh, 20 plus some extra. But point being, I mean, as you can see, that turned Probably a very, uh, it's not like exactly a royal blue. I would like this a little bit bluer, so I might try adding some more. But let's try adding something to some white. So I've got my bag of food coloring over here. We'll see. We'll start with, what do we have the least of? Because I know you made some earlier. We'll start with some yellow. I don't know. Well, let's start with some yellow. Now, generally, if you're working with uh, food coloring, you probably want to use gloves, I'm assuming, because it will definitely stain your hands. Now, is there any potential for this to stain your hands once it's mixed in, or is it fine after that? No, once it's mixed in, it's so one, fine. Just like regular Play-Doh? Mm -hmm. Won't stain your hands? Won't, will it stain your clothes? The Play-Doh? Mm -hmm. I don't know. You, if it was stuck there for a long time, maybe. Okay, so, kids, if you make this Play-Doh at home with your parents... Do not smear the Play-Doh on your clothes. How about that? I right. doubt it. It might also stain whatever you're kneading it on, so you probably want to do that on. I'm just gonna like ball it up in my paper hand, right? Or something. Um, you might be able to do it that way. We'll see. So you're too close to me. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I've got um, yellow food coloring, just like watercolor paint. I mean, that doesn't even look yellow. It looks like red, but it's actually yellow. Just like when I pour the watercolor, it always looks different. Now that looks straight up orange there. Is this yellow or is it orange? It's yellow. It's yellow. You're telling me it's yellow. Mm -hmm. All right, so I just put in what, like 10 drops or something? Now, of course, this is liquidy. So what I'm going to try to do is start kneading it without squeezing it too hard all at once. Because if I just squeeze it, there's going to go liquid watercolors flying all over the place. So yeah, it might be a good idea to do this where there's some cover, some parchment. For instance, it might stain linoleum if you just drip it and leave it. Well, I already told these I already told these guys not to do this without their parents' help like six times, so. Well, that's not, oh, there's a little bit of yellow. Oh, there it is. There it is. The lighting doesn't really let you see the yellow right now. So just, that's okay. We'll see it in just a minute. We'll do some comparisons. Just like in a class when we color our model magic, the model magic starts white, and then you kind of... Use your marker to stamp some color into it. You gotta really knead it up to get that color to come out. So let's bring it over here. Can the camera see the difference between those two? Mm -hmm. and I mean, this is definitely looking yellowish. You don't want Play Doh going in the drawer? That looks yellow. That's totally yellow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. That's yellow played out right there. And I gotta tell you, it feels nice. It feels, um, again, it's like, to, to me, it's about halfway in between the consistency of a model magic and a play doh. And I, I like model magic better than play doh anyway. So I do like this. Now, this uh, it's getting kind of like a little uh, crusty. Yeah. Is that normal with this type play doh? Um, is that what the cream of tartar takes care of? Maybe. It goes like away like, when like, you need it and yes, play it with it. I think it's just where it's kind of drying a little bit. I like the batch that we made earlier. We'll see. You definitely want cream of tartar. Cream of tartar. So that's what we didn't Instead have Instead of vinegar, yeah. And sorry, but I'm not going to the store right now to get cream of tartar for... That's the whole point of this channel, right? You use what you have at home to make art. All right, let's turn this into something. What do we want to do with this? Let's do a green. Is this cold yet? It's still kind of warm. It's not hot. It's been sitting here, what, five minutes? It's starting to cool. Let's do some green. 
Oh, I'm probably in the wrong place here. We should switch, shouldn't we? I'm backlit. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many did I do the last one? Ten. Ten-ish. I'm just gonna do a little more. I want I want this a nice bright oh, green. Cool. That was probably fifteen or twenty drops, if I'm being honest. Alright. They also seem to dry a little darker or brighter, a little more colorful than when you put the dye in. Oh, if you put it in after the fact it it's more colorful? No, just one once it's like sat there for a while. As the color like settles in and dries oh, out. This is why I'm wearing gloves. I think I just put my finger through a big goopy almost black looking green. I'm assuming it'll work out. Look at that. If you ever watch those channels where they make the taffy and they pull the candy and it's really like relaxing. Maybe I should just stop talking and just do this. I gotta say, it, do, it does feel like Play-Doh. Like it, it feels like Play-Doh. It's a little, a little more elastic. That's why I dropped a bit. It feels a little nicer than Play-Doh. That bit's going in the trash. Yeah, it does feel a little nicer than Play-Doh. Like, I feel like Play-Doh's a little bit more crumbly than this. Yes. So that makes this a lot nicer. And I prefer adding a lot of the color because look at that. That See, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I want for green. That's what I want for green. That looks nice. Well, I don't know how much blue is in there, so we're going to start with maybe eight drops of red. And again, this probably won't look purple immediately. I'm going over the sink because this is gooey, liquidy. Because I'm not sure that the blue is even the right color, but let's see what happens. It might just look terrible. It might turn gray. It might turn gray. It might turn brown. Although this blue is closer to a cyan, which is technically the real primary color. Even I feel like even purple Play-Doh, like brand name purple Play-Doh, never quite looks like the purple I expected to. Or at least when I was a kid it did. Maybe it's different now. Yeah, this is looking kind of gray. Now, we don't have... Is there such a thing as purple food coloring as opposed to, like, blue and red? We put have together? violet gel in a tube, and I have gel frost for frosting. See, this isn't looking purple at all. It's looking like that weird blue with some do some other to, color in there. Do you want to try the gel? Yeah, do we have it? Can we do that? My cake gel? If you yeah, have, is it I, readily accessible? It's up there. Up where? Up here? No, I have to get it. <laughs> all right, here, I'll take the... Yeah, so... That is not really turning purple. As you can see, it's almost like blue mixed with gray. Now, I could add more blue, I'm sure. I just don't know if it's going to get us there. There it is compared to the others. It just It's kind of just ugly blue. But the green turned out beautiful, and the yellow looks great, too. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's see if we can make it... Let's see if we can make one more like a real blue. Erica's looking for her... For her purple. Oh, it leaked. You can just. Where's the purple? Trying to do this one handed. Here. Alright. There you go. So this is just me adding more blue to one I already added blue to. It's the same type of blue. The only difference is when I first added it, and this one we added it when we were cooking it. So I'm just adding more of the same blue. And hopefully it makes it more like a nice deep dark blue. We'll see what happens. I really like that green. That green, like, that looks way better than real Play-Doh green, doesn't it? I feel like Play-Doh green is always that, like, light yellowish green. Not sure. I'm not sure this is doing anything to the blue, actually. It's getting a little darker. 
it seems like it takes longer than it ought to to blend up. It does. It takes a while. I mean, I always tell the kids because they start, we start mixing the model magic and, the, and they're like, it's not working, it's not working. I'm like, dude, you got to do it for longer than like two seconds. But I will say, this is taking longer than I expected. It, it mixes better and faster if you kind of put it down and smush it, yeah. Like this? Should I be doing this on the counter? It's fine. Well, It's no. fine in our home on our counter. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's telling you it's fine to do any of this. It's mainly mixed in, so it's not getting it on stuff. It didn't change that much, did it? Uh, it's a little nicer. Yeah, it's hard to see on here, but oh, it, it is different. It's a little nicer. It still has more of a turquoise vibe. I wanted it to be more of like a royal blue. This looks terrible. Look at that. What a terrible... Here. So, oh, is this purple the gel purple? Purple all out, so you can just... Ooh. So this is a different type of food right, color? I'm having trouble coordinating. <laughs> It's all right. Again, yeah, it's hard to do this stuff with just one hand, isn't it? Does it even open? It opens. Do you think this will be enough without opening it? It's more than you think. Just the part that leaked? Don't know. See, the part I where... I don't know if you can fix this. Because it's so gray and so gross. What a terrible color. This is what happened with the Easter egg. No. What are you talking... Those eggs looked awesome. No, when I tried to make purple dye. How did we get it purple then? I used, um, I used gel. This junk is thick. So this is Wilton gel coloring. It's made for frosting. Can I just scoop that right out of there? Yeah. So this is probably something most people wouldn't have in their home. Or what do you think? Would they? No. Do most not people even have food coloring cakes. in their home? Yes, they do. I don't know. I have no clue, like, what most people have. All right. Well, that should be a pretty good amount of that. We'll do one more scoop of this. All right. Let's see what that does. This gray might be unsavable. What a shame. Oh. I guess you mean gray play -Doh play -Doh. sometimes, right? Mm-hmm. It seems to kind of... Here, I'll do the counter thing again. Wait, can I do that with the gel? Yeah, once it's mixed in, it doesn't really make a mess. I feel like if I used a bunch more of the gel, this one would turn purple. Like, a bunch more. Because you can see parts of it that are purple. But for the most part, it still just looks gray. Mm. Mm -mm. It's kind of a dark blue. Mm -mm. I don't like it one bit. Ah, you know what? When I compared it to the others, it is. It's a weird... Should we, should we really go for it? Sure. Just dip your finger in there and just put it right in the dough. It's chunky. Is it supposed to be all chunky like that? It's like paint, dude. Yeah. The point of it is not to water down frosting when you need a lot of color. Now, here, here's a question. I wonder if you had paint, could you just put paint in here and color it with paint? Or would that, like, not be a good idea? Um, It might dry out. You're right. In a, paint, the wrong way. Yeah, paint probably has stuff in it that you wouldn't want hanging out. I guess food coloring is kind of made. To liquid watercolor might work. I love liquid watercolor. When I'm trying to get my model magic, uh, like, really bright color really fast, that's what I use. It's turning purple. It's working. It's working. It's working, folks. It still has gray in it, but it's, it's turning purple. Oh, it's definitely purple. Purple's always like the hardest color to get right. Because we talk about how... Uh oh. Am I activating dishwasher? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we talk about in class how like uh, red, yellow, and blue are not technically the true primary colors. It's magenta, yellow, and cyan. Magenta being like a bright pinkish color. And cyan being... Honestly, cyan is kind of close to that color. Maybe a little lighter. But purple's always the hardest one to mix when you're using paint. 
because it never turns out quite right when you just mix red and blue together. Look, that's purple. Here, come to that side so you can see. Does it Very show as purple? purple? Mm -hmm. That's purple. We got it. We got it. Bam. Ooh, it ooh, kind of bounces a little bit. After it fits, it kind of rises a little bit. It like expands and gets fluffy. And I'll tell you what else. The ones that we made and then mixed the color in, they didn't get that like crust. So I would say I would say the way to do this is to make it without coloring it and then put the color in after the fact. Because again, these first blue ones we stirred the color in while we were cooking them. Seems to turn out a lot better when you put the color in later. Look at that, that's pretty. Here, do we have some in here? The leftovers, where'd they go? Oh yeah. So here's some we made like a week ago. See, this is what I'm saying. Pick a green. Which green are you picking? Yes. You know which green you're picking. That one. Oh, I'm getting purple in it. Anyway. Switch. We made some, we made some other colors. Um, I got a bunch of white over here. Then I'm going to keep adding color too. But I think you guys get the idea. Get some food coloring. Get some stuff. Have your parents help you, of course. I'm going to keep making some colors. Are you doing red? Yeah. Now, red is one of those colors that usually takes a lot of red. Because red pigments are just never it's, quite there. It's just going to turn out pink. Just like, um, hey, I keep saying the same things, don't I? Just like when we do model magic, people who pick red, you know, they'll put the red marker ink in the model magic and then they mix it up and they go, ah, it's pink, it's not red. Again, pink is just like red. They're the same color. If it's dark, we call it red. If it's light, we call it pink. I don't know why light red gets its own special name. But yeah. Also, red dye just doesn't typically work that well. Like, um, you may have noticed if you have uh, projects that you did that had red construction paper, red is always the first color that fades. So sometimes... You know, if you've had it sitting in your room for a year, the other colors will still look good, but the red starts looking really faded. Mm, that looks decently red-ish. Probably add a little more. It's an interesting color. I think there's still a bunch of purple on my gloves, <laughs> so it's like almost mm. a... Um... Do you want more red? Eh. We're good for now. So anyway, I'm probably going to keep... Um... I'm probably going to keep playing with all this and getting more Play-Doh colors, but... I think for now, yeah, that's it. So let me say it one more time. Do not try to make Play-Doh by yourself. If you want to do this, um, grab one of your parents, get somebody to help you. I will put the recipe down in the description of this video. And I'm going to take my white and keep making some colors. And maybe next time I'll see if I can make some sculptures out of this. So that's it. See ya.